We are so excited to be here in Miami. I was very jealous that y'all were out here apparently turning up, waiting for us to come. But this guest tonight, I'm so excited to talk about his journey. Let's bring out Kofi Cirillo. I gotta thank you for taking the time out of your busy ABFF Miami schedule to stop by. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we get started, we always have to do like a toast, a sip. And by a sip, I mean we take shots. You guys in the audience, you're welcome to join us take, to take some shots. So I'm drinking tequila. What are you trying to toast to? Uh, uh, we're going to toast to being young, black, creative. Um, innovative and everything in between. I love it. And to a good night, to a good night in Miami. Cheers. 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 Mm. I'm gonna have a good night. Yeah, we good. We good. We good. Nah, Everybody take their shot. Damn, that's just serious. Um, I just want to weigh who's in the audience tonight because obviously we have a brilliant multi hyphenate. How many of you guys are writers? Uh, directors, that's what's up. Uh, producers, actors, fans. Hey, who is that? That's how you get down. <laughs> okay. Um, so first question for me, um, you have two brothers, their names start with K. Why haven't you started a dark skin R&B group? We're working on it, we're working on it. Can I give a name suggestion? Nah, you know, it's funny, like, <laughs> when we were kids, my mom was like, we need, we need like a brother's name, like, we're gonna do all, all K, 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 K. No, oh, not K, 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 no, 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 no. So you that's why the R&B group just never happened, honestly. You should call it the KKK, like reclaim it. Like people, you know, we did with the N-word. Hey, that's some 2020 shit. Maybe that's the move. <laughs> Maybe that's the move. Um, well, getting into it, you do so, so much. And, you know, one of the things that I think I admire about you is just how transparent you've been about your past and your own self-esteem issues. But you've gone, you've been acting since you were a child, you had a modeling career. So at what point did you get past your self-esteem issues and say, oh, my face hits, you know, I'm gonna be out here. When did you get the confidence? Um, <laughs> my face hits, that's funny. <laughs> Put on my um, bumper sticker. Like you said, I have two brothers. I was always like the middle brother and um, you know, the African background, they don't really hold back. So like my uncles would come to the crib, they'd be like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Like, you know, they just basically saying like, oh, you, like you've been eating, you know what I'm saying? And, it was just like, I was just a chubby, chubby brother. And I always, I found like, I found peace in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like I always like to just do creative shit that kind of helped me escape, but I didn't necessarily know I was escaping at that point. Now, when I was like 16, 17, I was like, you know, I'm about to be 18. I'm gonna get my Coogan account. I wanna, I wanna be myself. Like I'm gonna get this look, you know? And I, and I realized the only way I could do that was like, you know, confronting what was holding me back. And at that time it was, uh, my physical, you know, I, f I felt like I couldn't really be myself unless I, I guess, conquered that challenge. And um, I lost like, you know, 40 to 50 pounds Dang. at 17. Um, well, we have the before pictures, right? No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I said, who did that? <laughs> we didn't do that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> But uh, it was just brown rice and chicken. I was over on Ladera, you know what I'm saying, running and trying to do, you know, my little miles at my Nike app. Shout out to Nike, I'm down to do a deal. Um, <laughs> and you know, that was it. And I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, but I just was trying to be free. And I realized even years later, like, that's still what I'm trying to do, you yeah. know? And it's not necessarily a trying, but it's more just like a relinquishing, like trying to get rid of all the shit that makes me feel like I'm not. You know, and at that time it was the weight. You know, at this time it's something different, but you know, so. You don't want to share what the other insecurity is? Because that's going to be on my questions. So. I was about to say, I just want you to keep asking questions. Is you that the what? next question? 
Oh, next question, all right. I said, is that the next question? It could be, yeah. Like, what is? what do you feel like? <laughs> Now that it's not weight, like what is what are your what are your weaknesses? I'm right insecure now? about being famous. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm insecure about being successful. I'm insecure about accomplishing everything that I thought was supposed to make me feel happy, but I realize I'm still not fully happy. And I and now I'm realizing that there's just more searching and exploring and I, I've accomplished amazing human goals, but it's not enough. Mm. So it's like I'm insecure about that, because nigga People look at me like, <laughs> people be looking at me like I got it, like it's all good, but it's like, I got problems too. Like, I'm dealing with shit too. Like, it's not all good just because I got bread. I got enough bread to be good for me, but I can't take care of my family fully right. the way I know, like, to liberate them from everything that, you know, has been a problem. I don't, you have just enough to, to have just enough, you right. know, just to feel like you got it, but it's like, you realize there's so much more to it. And um, I'm insecure about that because I don't really, I don't have all the answers. I also realize that when you, when you get a certain level of success, you know, it, it's easy to feel like you're like this infinite, like, you know, being like everybody kind of just says, you're just so special and you're just, I call it the special nigga syndrome, SNS. <laughs> it, it's like, but you have to kind of realize that, nah, I'm actually nothing, yeah. you know? And the, the only problem with not knowing is thinking you're supposed to know. And that's something I heard and I stuck with it because I really, I think I have to know everything, but I realize I don't. And it, and it, and it, it, it definitely releases a lot of weight. But it sounds like that is a, like, like a kind of a creative's problem of just like, cause it, it's rooted in self doubt to a degree of just like, you know, I don't have everything and I'm not worthy of all this attention and I'm not worthy of, of feeling like, you know, people, people see me through this specific lens. So, you're still out there, you're still acting, you're still, you know, um, uh, pursuing your dreams. So like, what are you telling yourself to, to keep going, like in spite of that crippling kind of self-doubt? Well, the bills gotta stay paid, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. Um, <laughs> and, and that's a big part of it. It's not a choice. Yeah. My choice would, to, would be to do nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would just wake up and do nothing every day, however that looks. You know? But you love it. Like, you love acting. Whoa. I, <laughs> I love acting. That's why that's my choice of expression. But is it really a choice or do the bills have to be paid? For me, I realized through acting and doing what I thought I loved that the bills just got to be paid mm -hmm. and that Acting isn't gonna be enough as far as an outlet for me because there's, there, there's so much to the human experience right. and like, you know, there's, there's only so much I can put into a character. At the end of the day, I'm playing a character. Right. The human experience is about truth, you know, and I bring my truth to these characters, but I still have to find that truth through every, I guess, outlet I can. And uh, that's something I'm still exploring. I still, I'm still exploring. For me right now, I write, I take pictures, I talk to people that, you know, uh, make me feel something. You know, I try, I try to stay, I just try to stay inspired by life. You know, at the end of the day, like, the, the simple shit really is the most, you know, amazing shit. It's like my dog right now. Like, lady just makes me like. You said your daughter? <laughs> my dog. <laughs> Wait, she said what? daughter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my bad. But ladies like my daughter, but <laughs> no, like, <laughs> nah, insane. but on some real shit, like, that's my little baby, you know? Um, <laughs> but like, just, the, she, she don't care about nothing, you know? Like, she just does, like, everybody, she don't like a lot of people, but sometimes she, it's just, she's just, she's open, you know what I'm saying? And I realize with this fame stuff and with success, it's very easy to get desensitized. Mm -hmm. And um, I still, I, I, when I say I'm like, I've been at this place where I feel like I'm ready to love again. And it's not just like I'm ready to love again, I'm ready to be in a relationship. It's like, I'm ready to love myself again. Like I'm ready to, 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 uh, to like have that same in, like eagerness and curiosity and openness and fire that I had when I thought money was gonna solve all my problems. Now that I got it, what's gonna drive me for the next however many years God chooses to keep me alive? You know, because I already have, I guess, the first tier of what success is. So, and then what is my favorite question? Well, so let's get into that just in terms of what, if you're ready to love again, you're ready to be out there and you're ready to be 
so to speak, turned on again. What turns you on creatively? She thought she was smooth with that segue, though. It was a great. I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> Y'all are real rowdy. I just want you to know that. They're extremely rowdy. This is a respectable conversation. So one more time, what turns me on what to what? What turns you on creatively? What gets you excited about like working again? When you are in the, in the doldrums of like, this shit is some bullshit. This is I just, famous. I, 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 I fantasize. Like, I wanna, I, and, I, and I, I fantasize from every angle. So I love photography. I love music. I love writing. I love cinematography. I love um, colors, you know. So it's like you can literally create worlds. And um, there's so many worlds that I wish I could have, could have explored as a child, but we just don't have the space to create those kind of worlds. Worlds like Queen Sugar, worlds like Insecure, and worlds like Black Panther and beyond. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing what, A, what reality, like, when's the last time you just, like, I've never seen an Issa Rae character in a movie that's like, you know what I mean? Like, you're dope in real life. But like, it would be so. <laughs> But like, you, it would be such a big deal to see a character like you being played like it wasn't a big deal, if that makes sense. So you're gonna, he's gonna write the movie. Guys. Type shit. Right. <laughs> but it's even Entourage. I identified with Entourage because it was really relative to the life I was living, but that was four white dudes. I could only imagine, like, four black, like, man. But that story, we don't have that space. So for me, just the lack of seeing that in my understanding of that, in the fact that I'm young, excited, angry, mad, fascinated, curious, everything, every, all, all of the emotions, and I'm able. I'm gonna use all of that, and I'm gonna make those spaces, you know what I'm saying, and I'm gonna create those worlds, and that, 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 that turns me on. <laughs> well, I mean, you are like, you know, you're super young, you're 24, navigating, you know, the industry, and, this industry, Chill, like, I ain't no baby now. <laughs> so this industry is like, is like, has the face of a young person, but is run by old heads. So have you been in a situation where you feel like you've been, you've been pressed or you've been uh, influenced to move in a certain way that you felt like this is some old heads talking. And, you know, how did you navigate that? How did you deal with that? Um, good question. <laughs> I feel like it all was just designed by old heads, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Let me, let me, let me, let me think for a second. Take another sip and then um, <laughs> work the answer. But that is a very real, real thing of just, like, so many, because so many, no, this I, generation I, is certain, like, it's coming up and making their mark. It's, it's overly real. I'll, I'll put it this way. I used to think that it's kind of like when you're a kid and you feel like the adults have all the answers because they pretend like they have all the answers so you don't have to think about that. So there's like a, a bliss that comes with ignorance, you know? You know, you're just living, you're just being, you're just in the world, you know, you just... So I'm, there was such an authenticity to my approach to success and um, I realized that even that, that what I thought I was attaining was a design, you know? It, and it was designed by people of an older generation, you know? So now that I attained it, I realized that it's not as tangible as, as I believed it to be. Like, you, you believe, like, when you don't have certain things and then you acquire them and you thought those things were gonna change your life, liberate you, let you be everything you want, and they don't, it makes you question not only yourself, not only those things, not only your intentions, not only the, 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 the it makes you question everything. And the thing about old heads is when you start asking questions, they don't really like that, you know? So for me, it's like young people have to really realize that there is no reality. Society is a design, and it's our choice to design our own reality. But there's a lot of responsibility with that. What old heads have in their corner is that they have structure. They've created structures that are strong and running, and the foundation is reinforced, and it moves on its own. We're so passionate, we're so creative, we're so everything, but we don't know how to channel it because we're in the information age. There's so many distractions. So I wish we lived in a world where these, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to keep calling them old heads. What can we say? Mentors. Uh, it's too late. We caught them that. So just heads. call them old heads. 
I think with, 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 with people of the older generation, I feel like there should be more important wisdom on the younger people and there should be more truth telling. I feel like there's a lack of transparency. Everybody work hard, stay patient. You got, but they don't talk about the trials and the errors and their failures and where they fucked up and where they could, they could, they could be, if there was a level of transparency to their journey, I feel like our history would be passed down and we wouldn't be so disconnected from our identity. We're out here trying to find ourselves and be something that we've already been for so long and we don't have to re-be it. Like we get to take what we've been and then move forward. But because the information's not getting passed down, it's like we keep st starting over. There's no generational wealth, there's no generational, you know, I, financial literacy is not a thing. There's so many things that I would imagine would be passed down, but I think there's a huge ego thing, you know? Everybody's trying to hold on to what they think is, you know, important, and, 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 and the cost of that is disconnection, you know? We're disconnected from our parents, we're disconnected from, you know, our, our bosses, we're disconnected from ourselves, and we're disconnected from our roots. We don't know who we are because we're, we don't, there's no unity, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like unity comes with humility, and, and humility comes with transparency, and, Transparency comes with understanding that none of this shit matters in the sense of we live and we die. The in-between is only that. So just be real, be truthful, and, and actually push the world forward if that's, if that's, you know, if that's on your heart, I guess. <laughs> can you, in, in the spirit of transparency, and no one talking about when they've fucked up, can you talk about the last time you felt like you royally fucked up, and what you kind of took from that? It's a good question. That's like, it's, I fuck up every day, so I gotta think about something like Me too, you know. I fuck up all the time. <laughs> I mean, I'll just talk about the big fuck up. Like, again, I was a chubby kid. You know, I felt like if I lost weight, that would be my liberation. It wasn't, but it was, mo it was enough. You know, it was a thing. It was, it, was, it was validated externally, so it felt like something in moments. Um, you know, I used those moments and I used the, you know, sense of confidence it gave me to, to project confidence and to use other moments to be where I am now, to, to find, you know, success through my passion. And um, through getting the success, I realized that, you know, I, I, I've been basing everything off of you know, and I've always been into, I'm a Pisces, emotional, you know, into the water. Like, I've always been into like the, <laughs> the spiritual side of things. Like that's, you know me, you know I be on the spiritual shit. Like that's, that's always my approach to life, you know? So me who I thought I was so woke, you know what they call it, and then to realize that I wasn't because after I received everything I thought I was working towards, which also came faster than I thought it would, I just, I fucked up by thinking it was really gonna mean something. Cause when you get it and you have it and it's moving and it's going and you're in it and you realize that it's not actual liberation, you don't get to stop life. Life keeps going. You know, you have to deal with your choices. There's a level of accountability that comes with choice and there's a level of accountability that comes with being naive, you know, and, and choosing to be ignorant to certain shit. One of my three, I say three A's, acknowledge, accept, ascend. I acknowledge that I was looking for something outside of myself and I fucking found it and it wasn't enough. That was very hard to accept. While I was trying to accept it, I was contracted to film a TV show. And because mental health is real, the days I don't wanna go to work don't exist when you gotta film a TV show, point blank, period. So your boy went to work, I did what I had to do, and I went home. And I did it, I went to work, and then I went home. And then I went to work and I went home and I did nothing. I said 2017 was my year of nothing. A lot of people would say that was the biggest year of my career, but that was the year that I fell back more than I ever fell back. I've always go hard just because I just, that's just what I do, like just 2,000%. But last year I was like, you literally have nothing left and you just need to think about shit. Because if you keep moving in the patterns and the habits that have already been established, they're not creating the happiness that you fantasize about and you're going to hit a, a, a wall, a dead end. And I was afraid of that, but I did anyway, but at least it was, instead of this impact, it was, it was a slow death that didn't kill me in the car crash. But 
I'm rebuilding right now. You know, there's a rebirth happening. And, that's um, relatable. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you preach it right now. It's real shit. It really and, is. And, and I'm, I'm rebuilding right now, but the thing is, I, wanna, I want people to understand that we got to give people space to rebuild. We all know we're all living individual lives. We come out in public and sit here and look at each other and we talk and do all of this, but I know everybody got something going on outside of this. But then we'd be like, mental health, yeah, that's such a great. So when I say I can't come to work, why are you tripping? So when I say like I just need a moment or I can't answer your call, why are you tripping? When I say I can't answer your text, instead of tripping, maybe you should say, are you good? Like why, why do we act? <laughs> but, it, but it should, if that's what we're talking about as far as mental health in the community, we should really talk about it. And there's a level of transparency that's, it's necessary, otherwise it's all fake and I can't fuck with the fake shit. Woo. Well, I wanna get with it to that because you are, you know, such an advocate for mental health and obviously you have, you know, your, your short film that you just dropped, or your short documentary that you just dropped with a short film coming, but you've, uh, I wanna say chosen a pre profession where rejection <laughs> is so prominent. So much rejection. And I think, like, I just went on audition the other day after a long time of not auditioning, and I bombed that shit. I fucked that shit up because I just, I was in my own nerves, and I was like, can I even do this? Why am I here? And it was just devastating, and I was like, I don't, you know, I have a new, and I'm so used to being on the other side of the couch for my own show of just, like, watching people, and I've always had a respect, but I just had a new respect because I left there, like, knowing, like, okay, y'all don't have to tell, just shut up. Don't, I know I fucked up. Don't give me no compliments. Like, just give me the elevator, give me my parking validation, and let me go, just <laughs> let me handle this. But given that what you, what you experience and feeling like, I don't want to get up and do this. I don't want to get up and go to the job that I've booked sometimes. How do you get up and go to try out for something that you may just hear no? And sometimes you don't even hear no. Sometimes you read an article in the trades like, oh, they got it, good for them. That's good, no, go sis, you know? So how do you, how do you deal with motivating yourself to go to potentially hear no? To be completely honest, I've eliminated that process in my life. I felt like... <laughs> You so you don't me. go on auditions so <laughs> How you feel me so quick though? I even have to explain it. She got it immediately. What I'm trying to say when I say when I say by I eliminated that process in my life, I've heard no so many times. I've spent my whole life auditioning in sunny LA trying to be somebody. I don't want to hear no anymore. That doesn't mean that I don't want to hear no, but I want to create my yes. The thing is, even me hearing no wasn't a choice, once again. So I can't accept that as a reality. I can't continue to think that it's my normal to have to s w wait for somebody to say yes. People might call it pride, people might call it arrogance, et cetera, but I also believe a lot of people operate on false humility. If you're humble, don't be humble. You can't project humbleness. You just are humble. If you're like, I'm humble, you're not fucking humble, so you're lying. So it's like, you gotta just, be it. So I was like, look, if I believe in independence, a lot of, it, I'm not gonna project it. It just means I can't fuck with your auditions. And it means if you wanna talk to me on a level of partnership, I have no problem auditioning. I'm, I'm working my ass off for a film right now. That's not the point. It's just that I'm not gonna put myself through a trivial process that doesn't really add nothing to me. I gotta really care about the the project and the creators behind the project, and if it's all aligned, therefore I just, I, I deal with the nerves, because they exist, and I'll deal with everything that comes with being on the other side and having to be on this side, but that's, that's the vulnerability part, I don't mind that. But it's very, very, very selective, and truly I do not want to have to ask for nothing at a very soon, 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 soon date. No more asking, I'm done with that. Amen. So, I mean, he's what as fuck? Sexy Thank you. as fuck? Thank you, as fuck. Thank you. Sip to that. <laughs> Shit. As fuck. So you're a photographer. You're an actor. You produce. You write. You direct. Um, one, I guess, how do you know when something is ready 
to release? Like, when do you, when do you, when do you feel like, because a lot of us are perfectionists out here. I've heard so many of my friends be like, ah, oh, I'm working on this shit, and I'm just not ready to put it out right now. And it's like, bitch, it's good. Like, put it out. That's better than most of the shit I've seen. And so sometimes we can get in our own way. How do you decide, like, I'm ready to release this to the I'm public? I'm the worst person to ask that question. I, like, make excuses for everything. I'm like, God didn't say it today. The rain is different. The weather is... <laughs> Today is not the day. It's like, <laughs> nah, but I, I, there's no answer to that question. Like I said, I'm very spiritual in the sense of I believe in the nothingness and the everything and all the spaces in between, and it don't have to make sense because you make it make sense. It's just all of that. So it don't have to make sense because nothing does. So I believe in that shit. That being said, like, I'm working on, like, timelines, and I'm working on, like, I'm, I'm kind of testing myself because I like to take my time. That just makes sense because there's no such thing as time. It's just it's either right or it's not. That being said, also, there is like the construct of time, you know, nine o'clock, eight o'clock, et cetera. So okay. when you tell people, I'm going to release this or I'm going to be here at this time, they're going to show up at that time. So, you, you know, that being said, <laughs> I, what the fuck is mental health? The document, short documentary I made. I jump, which is the film. That, that what the fuck mental health is, is, is accompanying. Um, that I spent so much time on. That was, my, that was my healing, you know? I thought it was a da 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 I was making a film, I'm making a project, I'm making a show. But that was me really finding a truth or, or at least just, just diving into a truth that I didn't know how to dive into. And my only form was creativity, you know? Ziggy, um, in a film that I'm gonna be releasing very soon, um, Jump. Ziggy before, oh, got it. Ziggy, the main character in Jump. Yeah, Ziggy. I was like, you got a different short film than Jump. No. I've been hearing about Jump for a while. Uh, yeah, you saw a little bit of it, mm -hmm. but um, and it was fire, right? It's great. All right, all release right. that shit. All right, it was fire. Um, <laughs> um, but um, nah, Jump, Jump, Ziggy, Jump. It's all about this dude who's on this journey, and you know he's contemplating suicide, and um, you know it, it was a very a creative experience, you know, somebody close to me actually committed suicide um, right before I booked the Roller Queen Sugar and they jumped off a fucking bridge. And uh, I didn't really know how to deal with that. <laughs> and you know, it, and I didn't know how to deal with that. I just booked a job, I'm going to New Orleans. I'm a, I got money, I'm gonna make a project. Shit, maybe I should talk about something that's relative to my life, shit. Sometimes I feel like jumping off a bridge. I'm never gonna jump off a fucking bridge. I'm never gonna jump off a fucking bridge. But I don't think about suicide, suicide thinks about me. Death is the only thing promised. I live and I die, we all do. Suicide is, is a choice that people take that is very, very, very sad, but we have to wonder why it's a, it's a choice that a lot more people are taking. What society are we in that is pushing people to make such a choice is my question. I'm not gonna make the choice, you know what I'm saying? I got family, I got God, I got everything I need to stay right here. <laughs> but a lot of people don't feel like they have that, and that's why I made that project for, for myself, for my brother who jumped off a, a, a fucking bridge, and for anybody who's, who's ever felt like they didn't wanna be here. So that being said, I don't know what the fuck I was saying next. Um, take a sip from. So she said, "Drink that tequila, Kofi." <laughs> um. Well, with the with the crippling self doubt, with all of these things that accompany, even just mental health, just. I feel like cre creativity and mental health are kind of hand in hand, be hand in hand, because you made this film to sort of express what you felt, what you couldn't say, what you, the feelings that you couldn't reconcile with, right? And I didn't have the language for it. And say that again. I didn't have the language for it. You didn't have the language for it, so you made the language through this film through, that you haven't released yet that we're all waiting Absolutely. for, right? Yes. So uh, part of what's being creative is, I and mean, you said you, yourself, like you, you sometimes have these excuses of just like, it's not ready, the rain is fucking shit up. But what do you feel like right now, just given all that you wanna accomplish, just given the restlessness that you have, do you have a, cause sometimes it's about like, if I just had this, I'll be popping. If I just had this, 
my shit would fly, you know? Is there something, is there this in your life where you're like, if I just had this, and given that you thought it was other things, you thought it was gonna be success or money or whatever else, what do you think it is now where you think, you know, creatively you'd be at peace? Good question. You fuck with my questions today, I like that. I'm good on the sips, trust. <laughs> you can think about it. No, 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 we're gonna stay right here. Stay right here. <laughs> I guess for me, and it was, uh, I thought about this when you said it, but I wanted to put it the right way. I feel like that this is a thought that I need to know that I don't need a this. The this is the thought that I don't need the thought that I needed this. There is no this. There is nothing to achieve. There is nothing I need to be that I'm not. I owe nobody shit. I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. And I'ma just be fucking fantastical and great because that's what I am. And, and everything that I experience or experienced all of it wasn't a choice. It was designed that way. They designed it for me to, you know, feel this way. Feel like I have something to prove to them or to myself or to anybody. So realizing that I achieve what they call success, which is not shit. And now I realize, well, I want something more than success. I want real freedom. So now I'm like, they don't even got that. Nobody got it. That's nothing and everything. We already did it, but that's the space in between. That's God. That's the Real success don't exist on a human realm. That's spirit. So now I'm on a journey of creating spaces without thinking I owe anybody shit, because I don't. Using my bread that I get from their system, because I need it, to make the spaces I need in my system, because I need it, <laughs> to be who I want to be in God's eyes. And to me, that means in spirit and there will, if, if you could ever define it, then it never is real. Like, if it's true, you'll never know. So it's always an exploration until I die. As soon as I call myself something, I'm not anything, I'm done. So right now there's no this, there's no me, there's no anything, I'm spirit, I'm God, I'm just expressing, and there's just truth. Equality is simple, the end. Everybody should be free and everybody should have the choice of freedom. Preach, Cove, preach. Nah, it's facts, it's truth, and I don't take credit for it because it's just the truth, we all know it. So I'm just doing what I can do in my little human suit to create those spaces for myself and anybody who rocks with me, and, and I'm gonna do that until he takes me away from here. But in the in-between, the in spread love, live life, and understand that life is not what they are trying to tell you to live. You design it, and you live it, and you enjoy it. Because happiness is a choice. It's not a reality. Right. So I have a few minutes to ask you questions. And I think I have like five minutes. So I'm trying to decide what I want to ask you. OK, I mean, here's one. I think. Um, I finished my drink. You finished it? You it's gone. Want this? No. Now we talking. So this is, everybody keeps saying like in, <laughs> in interviews, what you say girl? Um, in interviews is always like, oh, this is such a good time. Like, how do you feel? It's such a good time for black people. Ah, it's your time. And diversity, it's The diversity, a the inclusivity, you must feel great. And it's like, ah, we're just scratching the surface. You know, we still have so many more stories to tell. And as a storyteller, what do you feel like you want to see that you specifically will have your own imprint on? And, you know, I, I kind of have a sense which really excited me, but just talk about, like, what mark you want to leave just as a creator on this industry. I want to create spaces for, uh, for young black people to be free, you know? And when I say free, as a young black man, there's so many things that I've... I, <laughs> <laughs> I love Issa too. Um, there's so many. There's so many times that I've been what I had to be. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought I had to be it. 
So it's like, as a young kid and as a young adult right now, I wanna create spaces where young kids and young adults could be what they want to be, what they choose to be, and young black adults could be what they want to be and choose to be, in a world that actually ref reflects our magic. You know, I feel like in a, as a young actor growing up in LA, I, I would get auditions all the time. My little brother just called me today. <laughs> he was bugging out, like he was like, yo, I keep getting these auditions, and I just feel like they make black people not really, you know, like, and I'm like, I feel you, bro, like, yeah, I do, I feel you. But I felt, I, I knew how that felt. It was what I was experiencing until God just was like, Queen Sugar, oh, shit. I'm out, I'm out, I did it. But I auditioned so many times, like man, I might call it like fucking 500 auditions for like five of them where I actually wanted to book them. But I had to pretend like I wanted to book all of them. Cause I got people that I work with that they like, why are you not booking none of them? But I can't be like, well it's because of the system. No, it's just like, what are you they doing? Don't care. They don't give a shit. <laughs> So you have to reconcile with reality. Like I said, three A's, acknowledge, accept, ascent. I didn't know that when I was trying to get to this place, but I realized, man, I just, wa I just want us to be free, man. Hey, I, want, I want to be free. And I'm, I'm more free than a lot of people will consider themselves based off of success and fame and all these identities I didn't necessarily choose. They just come with the, you know, with the package. That being said, if I want so badly, in the midst of having everything, to be free, I can only imagine how many other people just want to be free. They could be a lot of things, beautiful, successful, you know what I mean, artsy, confident, good luck, the list is long. But free? Real freedom? What's that look like? Well, can you talk about that just in terms of, because you have an image, right? And you know, the, the thirst in this audience is palpable. I'm not gonna lie. I can cut it with a knife. <laughs> but like, how do you feel like the industry sees you? And how, do you, how much do you feel like you control that? And you know, how much are you doing to subvert that? If, Grapefruit. If Grapefruit. That's how you feel like the industry sees you? I hope not. I, I say that because, once again, on some real shit, on some real shit. I'm young, black, you know, I'm sick some, you know, I'm just using the bodysuit God gave me, you know what I mean? I'm just fitting the identities I was given. <laughs> so, I'm do I, I did what I had to do to get to a place to be where I don't gotta do nothing, or be that, you know? So it's like, I feel like the industry sees me how I've been, you know, projecting myself. I've been what I had to be, you know? Like, and that's, that's not a bad thing. I feel like we all are who we have to be, either by choice or subconsciously. Consciously, it doesn't matter, but in this place, like I'm telling you right now, shit called, like, market on this day. Like, I'm just trying to be myself, you know? I've worked so hard to get to a place where I can speak to beautiful women like you on a stage where people are watching hey. just to say that I only just want to be myself. And um, that's it, that's it, that's just, that's it. I know I keep saying it, but that's it. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you Kofi, so much for sharing your, th your truth, for being transparent, for being honest. You guys, unfortunately, that's all the time we have tonight. We still got this open bar. How many of you got, you got an open bar backstage, why are you tripping? Oh, okay, I was um, happy. How many of you guys are here for ABFF? So we're going to see y'all out and about tonight, but thank you so much for coming out. Give it up for Kobe one time for sharing his truth in this vulnerability.